Hello, family. Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to our 11 o'clock Bible study. We're so glad you guys could join us this morning. Guys, it's a beautiful morning here in Middle Tennessee. Hopefully, it's beautiful where you guys are from. Guys, today, or actually not today, this morning, but yesterday, the, the Lord, he really was, I was reading the word, and he brought me into Romans. And guys, he was really putting this on my heart. And I wanted to share with you guys also, because as I was reading this, he was just downloading a whole bunch of stuff into me as to the way a lot of the American uh, church, the way they act, the way they operate, um, and how it shouldn't be. And so I don't want to give up too much away because He's I do at least want to open up prayer. I'm just excited today. about it, guys. I'm really excited about this lesson. And he talked to me about this all night last night. So yeah, I, was, uh, I had a rough really kind of way. I told him, I said, I'm just going to get out of your way today, babe, and just let you talk. I was like, I don't know. I was like, this is this is is both of ours and the, of course the Lord uh, directing all of it but yes, I'm so just excited though. this morning about it Hello, guys I feel like Cindy, I'm I feel like I'm Lori. always excited about it uh but Kayla, um, every Elder, week I just look so forward Hello, to Hello. the uh the 11 o'clock Bible study it just uh it's like the one of the highlights of like my whole week Ooh, uh, just be able to get Leanne. on here with you guys Hello. Yes, so um, we're just kind of talking for a minute giving everybody a chance to figure out that we're on Hello Miss Samantha and Allison um, you're from Atlanta, Georgia. That's cool. Good afternoon. I hope it's, I <laughs> yeah. hope it's warmer there than it is here because it's cold here. It was like 75 degrees and then it dropped down to 40 and I don't know what happened. Well, we got a little bit of rain. And and Jesus all of a sudden, turned the AC on. Yeah, he cranked it up. So <laughs> yes. that's okay. So we, we are in the middle of the 24 hour prayer. So if any of you yep. guys are in the state of Tennessee and want to hop down to the tent, our, um, Prayer leader Chris Bowman mm -hmm. would love to see you guys down at the tent. I'm sure Pastor Greg would love to see you guys down at the tent. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Um, also, for those of you who have pre-ordered sweatshirts. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pre-order. So you guys yes. will get the um, sweatshirts by the first week in March. They will be here in enough time for the awesome movie that's coming out. Come out in Jesus' name. You'll be able to wear your come out in Jesus' name or your warrior or we'll, the flipping tables like Jesus. The Trust God, Not Government, the Flower Shirt. There's a whole bunch of them, guys. And if guys. any of you guys missed it, we will come out with another pre-order. We got to come up with some designs. Yeah. I think we're going to do some throwback designs as well. So you guys will be able to get the um, one with the Miss Time, Pastor Greg's favorite verses on it. So we're just trying to work it out to where everybody gets exactly what they want and everybody's happy. Yeah. You guys, we do need a zip-up hoodie, but they're kind of expensive. And so I was like, eh. I, I was like, man, I was like, for, for us to sell those, I was like, damn, man, I was like, because they're, they're charging us a lot for those things. Yeah. So that was actually one of the ones, one of the things that we did look into. And guys, I want to let you know that for what we're doing, like the way with this pre-sales work, because I know that some of you guys, or maybe not you guys are watching now, but maybe you guys are watching later and you're like, oh, I went on the site, the GVBC Dash Apparel site, and uh, there's nothing on there. Why is there nothing on there? Because what we're going to be doing, guys, we're going to do, be doing pre-orders every single month and so what we'll do is we'll come out with new designs and then we'll put them on there for a week or two and allow people to buy them um, because what we were doing was that we are trying to buy and and hold stock and we can only buy so many of them stressful. and so guys it was like well not everybody was was able to get what they wanted and so we are running out of inventory they're like oh you don't have any 3xls or you don't have any 4xls or, or why are you guys out of out of larges already and that's because we were holding stock but with this way we have unlimited amount and what we what we're doing is is that we're getting all of our orders in in the week and then we're ordering all the shirts for the sizes and then we're having them being made and then they're shipping them out and so you guys are going to get them all on the like within the first week of march just before uh the come out in jesus name movie yes um Yes, and so this that's is, what we're going to be doing. That's the way we're going to be doing it. And so I thank you guys for everybody who's being patient because I know some people they ordered on the very first day and they have to wait longer than the people who ordered on the twelfth. Um, but I, but you guys are going to get your stuff. Actually, we just got a text message the other day. Uh, she showed from, us pictures. Yeah, of she showed them. us pictures of. Uh, they look she's, so They're good. printing them like in mass right now. Like they're like dedicating all their time to try to get all of the GVBC orders. Uh, made and out uh, for you guys and so uh, but they're looking really really good yeah, what's like, so beautiful about the the apparel ministry is that justin and i we don't make anything on no. it we literally give 
everything away. Like actually last year, whenever we did the taxes on it, we figured out that we actually gave more away than what the business actually made. Yeah. <laughs> we are like, how did that work out, Lord? Like, I guess he just split the loaves and was like, Phew. but it's a, our ability to um, be able to bless the online community, be able to bless other ministries. Ministries. Yeah, it's yep. been super, super awesome. Uh, even just this last drop, we were able to help bless the church and replenish some of the things that were lost um, with Pastor Greg giving everything away. So we've just been able to, uh, the Lord's really been able to just move through this. And yeah. as I said, nobody makes anything off of it. We just give that money away. And so it's, it's a just, ministry. It's so. a ministry. And it is so beautiful to see what the Lord is doing. And if people are in need, we can actually help them. And we don't have to, Justin and I can just be like, hey, we're just going to send you whatever you need. And so it's really, really cool to be able to do that. So we're super excited with what the Lord's doing. Yeah. And we're just going to get out of his way and let him do it. And we're just going to let him lead wherever all that needs to go. So, um, yeah, we're super excited about everything the Lord's doing. And yeah, he's doing some awesome things on the campus, guys. He really is. And I just, I, you know, when Joseph Z was out there the other day, and he said, we're, we're in 30-fold. He said, in two and a half years, we're going to be in 60-fold. I'm like, man, what does that we're look like? Because I'm like, we'll be ready. But the thing we'll is, be ready is that in two years, if like, what glory. we're doing right now, if what is happening in a global vision right now is only 30-fold, 30, 30, wow. I'm like, wow, we're just, we're like little, taking little bitty baby steps. We haven't even begun to even see what the Lord is truly going to be doing. And so I'm excited about it. I know you guys are too. We all need to be excited about it because the Lord, he is pouring out his spirit among, among all, all flesh, flesh right now. We are seeing it. Asbury, I mean, Asbury is like the talk of the town right now. Everybody can't stop talking about Asbury. What they did was is that they took the Grammy Awards and just blew them out of the water. They just <laughs> completely, like everybody's like completely just dismissed the Grammys. They tried so hard. Them devil worshiping mongrels. They tried so hard to, to try to promote themselves, promote their God and the Asbury just took over and the talk of the town is Asbury. They don't even care about the Grammys. The Grammys is old. It's old news. No one cares. And uh, I think that's amazing. And also that's not the only place. There's other places. I can't remember the names of them off the top of my head. I'm sure you guys know know them though. But, um, you know, there's just revival, pockets of revival breaking out everywhere. It's and really that's exactly cool. what... Honestly, like a year ago, it was like prophesied that this was going to start happening. That there was going to she be said, embers Asbury, coming off. How about that GVBC revival? Yeah, it's, it's going. It's, it's been like going on it's for always years going now, up here. Hallelujah. It really has. It really has. But um, you the know, Lord's the thing good, is, guys. is that they were, he, there was prophecy saying that there was going to be a fire and there was going to be embers coming off of it, and it was going to be landing in different parts of the country, and then it was going to be starting to flames. It was flames of revival, and there was going to be pockets just going all, just growing all over the place, and that's exactly what's happening and it's amazing yeah amazing. it's amazing what's going on six states six <clears throat> colleges that's awesome yeah yeah there you go yeah thank you danny but yeah, it's awesome, guys. Well, what we're going to do, guys, there's quite a few of you all on here. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to dive on into the she word. Said, because this is the red wave. Yeah, the blood of Jesus wave. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what we're going to do, guys, we're just going to dive on into the word, get some word in us this morning, because yeah, I know that's why you guys are here. Uh, communion this morning, because I'm just going to have a moment of honesty right now, as we have no bread and we have no Jesus juice, because my kids love Jesus juice. They, they love call, grape well, juice. that's what they call grape yeah, juice. They, the that's what the kids call <laughs> Jesus juice is the grape juice. They love it. They absolutely love it. And so they drank all of our Jesus juice and, uh, we have no bread, so yeah, looks like somebody's going to the store after this. Yeah, so. well, guys, what we're doing is we're trying, we're trying to eat healthier, and so we don't have all like the breads and the pastas and everything like we normally have. And so last time we, we don't even the store, have any crackers. We didn't buy anything like that. We we're like, oh man, okay. Note to self: we need to at least buy something for Saturday morning because we just completely spaced out on doing that. So, but today, guys, we're just gonna get straight into the word, and we're gonna get filled up with the word today because, like I said earlier, when I first hopped on, that the Lord He put this on my heart. And I think it's going to be really, really good. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit flow and just allow him to uh, just take over this Bible study today. And hopefully it blesses you guys as much as it blessed me last night whenever I was reading about it. So all right, I think Casey, she's going to open up in prayer and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. Heavenly Father, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise, Father. We just thank you for everything that you are doing in the midst of your people, Lord. We thank you for pouring out your flesh among all all are pouring out your spirit among all flesh lord we thank you lord for the pockets of revival that are popping up mm. all over the country most importantly lord we ask you to bring revival to our homes lord 
You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are the anchor to our faith and the anchors to our souls, Father. We thank you for everything that you are doing in your people. We thank you for what you're doing in this online community. We ask you, Father, to just send down your spirit into each and every single one of those rooms right now. Drown out all distractions, Lord. Get Justin and I out of the way and just let our words speak to your people, Lord. Let your words flow through us, Father, yes. that your points will get across and that lives will be changed because of these lessons, Lord. We just ask you to just create a clean heart in us, Lord, and renew a right spirit within us. We just ask you, Father, that we are allowed to grow in grace together as a community, that we show forgiveness to one another, that we resist being proud because we know that you give grace to the humble. We just ask you, Father, to just light our paths and let our paths be led to mercy, Lord, and let us walk in truth. Let us walk knowing that we can experience revival in our homes, that we just need to keep our eyes fixed on you, Lord, because you are great and you are merciful and you are worthy of it all, Lord. Allow us to practice your presence, Lord. Teach us to do your will, for you are our God and your spirit is good. Lead us, Lord, to the path of uprightness. Give us wisdom and give us knowledge and understanding of your word for sound wisdom leads to righteousness, Lord, and you are a buckler to them that walk uprightly, Father. So we just ask you, Lord, to preserve our ways, preserve our paths, and just allow us to walk in righteousness, allow us to walk in a a season of repentance to you, Lord. Allow us to be fully submitted to you, Lord Father, so that we can truly see and taste that you are good through submission to you, Lord, that you're going to lead us into your perfect will, that you're going to lead us in humility, that you're going to lead us as we should go. So we just ask you to just place a blessing on each and every single person, Lord. Allow us to dwell at ease and allow us to just Soak in the words that you have for us today, Lord. Allow us to just bask in your glory today. Lord, just get us out of the way and work through us today and just speak to the hearts of your people. Give them ears to hear and eyes to see, Lord. We just thank you, Father, for all the many things that you are doing in this church and in this online community. And we thank you for each and every single person under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. All right, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to be in Romans today, chapter 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to take off in verse 19. So if you guys have your Bibles, which I hope you do this morning, you guys want to flip over to Romans chapter 6 and verse 19. Now, the whole chapter of of, uh, of Romans chapter six is just chalk full of a walking in newness of life, being dead to the old man, rising up a new creation in him, you know, uh, that we should not be slaves to sin, but slave, but a servant to God. Guys, this whole chapter is completely chalked full of it. It is just an eye opener for sure. And so guys, I would encourage you guys to read this whole chapter, but don't do it right now because what we're going to be doing, we're going to start in verse 19 and we're going to read all the way down through verse 23. So if you guys are there, we're going to go ahead and, and read it. And then we're going to dissect it and we're going to talk about it. So starting in verse 19 in chapter six, it says, I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. At, for as ye have yielded your members servants unto uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit have ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and becoming servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, guys. There's a whole Amen. lot of information in there. And so, guys, we go back up to 19. It says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. 
For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to the iniquity unto iniquity, even so yield your members' servants unto righteousness, unto holiness. What he's saying, guys, you're like, man, that's a whole mouthful. What is going on here? Guys, what he's saying is that how hard you served sin, how hard you served the world, how hard you, you led, you followed the culture is how hard you need to follow Jesus, how much you need to strive for him. Because the thing is, guys, is that we parted it up hard. Guys, we lived good for the world. We weren't ashamed of it. We we are out there. We were doing our thing, living our so-called best life. And the thing is, guys, that there was no shame in our game. And we would go out and we would promote the world. We lived for the world and we did it to the fullest of our abilities. Guys, we did. And so he, what he's saying is, is that for as much as you lived unclean in your life, even so now yield your member servants unto righteousness, unto holiness. So as hard as you live for the world is as hard as you should be living for Christ right now. I find it amazing. Amazing that people were just knocked down, drag, knocked down, drag out sinners and for the world. And then when they become Christians, all, be, all of a sudden they become this meek and mild individual who's reserved and who doesn't want to talk about things. I don't want to offend anybody. But whenever you're in the world, you offend people all the time and you didn't care what you said. You're like, oh, this is oh, who I am. Good. Either accept me or don't accept me. But then as soon as we become a Christian, all of a sudden we don't have that attitude anymore. We don't have the attitude of you're either going to accept what I have to say or just move along. The thing is, is that Jesus said that whenever you go into town to town preaching the word, if they don't accept you, shake the dust off your feet and move along. But the thing is, is that we don't do that anymore. Now, all of a sudden, we're like, oh, well, you know, I need to cater to these people. I need to be all nice and calm to these people. But the thing is that whenever we were sinners, we weren't like that at all. But the thing is, is that we need to be as hard up for uh, being a Christian as we did being a sinner. So that's what he's saying here. There is no, you, we shouldn't be all of a sudden meek and mild as far as we should be meek and mild. But the thing is that we shouldn't be meek and mild to the extent of not preaching the gospel, of not telling people the truth, of afraid we're going to offend somebody. Because the thing is, guys, is that we didn't care about offending people back then. Nope. We didn't care about it at all. We weren't, we weren't ashamed to, to drink and, and cuss and smoke and, and do everything else and go out and fornicate. We weren't ashamed of none of that. We, we were out in the open with it. We told everybody. We told everybody about it. Like we just made it right out there in the open and plain. Mm -hmm. Half the Christians that are people who call themselves Christians in America, we don't even know they're Christians. But I can tell you that I know a guy who's a drinker because he's open about it. He's a drinker and he's not ashamed of it. Why do, why were we not ashamed to be a drinker? Why were we, were we not ashamed to be a foul mouth sailor, but yet we're ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We're ashamed to be called Christians. Why is that? I don't understand. And that's why Paul made that. That's why Paul said that. So as hard as you rocked on for the world, you need to be that hard rocking on for Jesus. Yeah. I feel like if you're willing to go out to a restaurant and sit there with a beer in your hand and let the whole world know that you're a slave to your sin, you should be just as equally as comfortable going out into a restaurant and opening up your Bible because we are bond servants to Christ and we need to make sure that we are willing to proclaim the goodness of God no matter where we are because we were willing to proclaim whatever we were doing in the world, whatever it was. 90% of everyone, Justin and I ourselves, before we even got saved, before mm -hmm. we truly got saved and yep. became servants to the Lord, we didn't have any problems going out and having a beer in public. Now I would literally die if I went out and had There's a beer in public. No way. There's, There's no way. There's no way. I ain't promoting that garbage, mm -hmm. not for one more so, day. One thing that um, the Lord showed me one time whenever Justin and I, and he was still speaking to us whenever we were living in sin. He really was. And he was quickening our hearts. He was hearts. calling us out. He was calling us out and pulling us out of the miry clay. He told us, or he told me, he said, every time you go and buy beer, every time you go and buy marijuana, you are funding the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. He said, where is your money going? Where are you tithing? Are you tithing to the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light? And I was like, Lord, because I realized right then and there that I was given Satan way more money than I was given the Lord. And it was convicting to me. Yeah. And I realized that I was funding the kingdom of darkness rather than the kingdom of light. And I mean, I was literally a slave. I was a slave to my sin. And I did not yield anything to cleanliness at that point in time and I was not I was not ashamed of it. I went to friend's house, I smoked, I drank. I 
we didn't hardly talk about the Lord no. and we knew the word though. That's the thing. Cause whenever Justin and I were together, we talked and talked and talked about the Lord, even in whenever we were living bad mm-hmm. and 90% of people who are Christians, they get drunk and talk about Jesus. <laughs> and that's because the Lord's like, wake up, wake up and see that you are a slave to your sin and yep. you cannot be in submission to me and slave to your sin. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. Yeah, come up out of that grave. Come up out of that grave. Come up out of that grave. But verse 20, it says, For when we were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. So he's saying that whenever we were whenever we were the servants of sin, do you understand what he's saying? Sin is a slave owner. Guys, whenever we give into our sin, they, it takes control over us. We have no control over the situation. We say, oh, well, I want to do what I want to do. Well, I like my habit. I like what I'm doing. Do you realize that, that Paul's saying right here that you're a slave to that? Guys, the thing is, is that we are bond servants to Christ. If you've given your life to Christ, you said, Lord, I give my life to you. You are now a bond servant to him. He bought you with a price, the price of his blood, the blood that was shed on the cross. He bought you with that blood. And for us to turn around and go back to sin, to go back and allow it to take bondage of us, guys, we have this false sense of, of I'm doing what I want to do. I'm living my life the way I want to live it. No, you're not. You're living your life the way Satan wants you to live it mm-hmm. because he knows that if he can get you to fall into temptation and fall in the sin, that he's going to put shackles on you. He's going to tie you up. He's going to make you a slave to him and a slave to your own temptations. And it's lead you to will death. have no control. Do you realize that whenever you have these urges, they just gnaw at you and they bite at you and it feels like that they can't go away and you're like, I don't know what to do. And so we just just give into it. Guys, every time we do that, then what we're doing is we're putting more and more chains on us. We're allowing it. See, the thing is, is that we are allowing the enemy to bind us up, to keep us bound. Because the thing is, is that it says in the word, James says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But the thing is, is that we can only, we only resist the devil for maybe an hour or so, and then we're outside again smoking a cigarette. Or we only resist the devil while we're at work, and as soon as we get home, we got to crack open a beer. Or we only resist the devil until 3 o'clock in the morning when we get on our phone and start looking at pornography. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? That's not resisting the devil. You're giving him place in your life and your bondage to your sin. Jesus said that that he will give you that, or it says in the word that there are any temptation that you have, that God has given us a way out. He's given us a back door for escape. So the thing is that whenever we stand before an almighty God and he says, why did you fall into this temptation? You can't say, well, I had no way out. I was overbeared. I, no, no, no. It says in the word right here that he gives you a back door. That, there, that he always gives you a way out of temptation. For every temptation that you have, there is an escape route. Yeah. And God gives it to you. And you guys are sitting here thinking, and I know that you guys know this is true, because every temptation that we fall into, we can say no. We can put the phone down. We can throw the cigarettes out the window of the truck. We cannot go to the bar. We cannot go down to the liquor store and buy a six-pack of beer or buy a fifth of liquor. Guys, and these are the big things, okay? Yeah. These are like the big things that we all think of. But here's another thing that I want to let you guys know. Guys, if you guys are living in known fear and you're not giving it to the Lord, you know that's sin because it says that we should be anxious for nothing, that we should be caught. Paul says in the, in the King James, we should be cautious for nothing. That means anxious. That means fearful. And so whenever we live in fear and we, and we do these things, do you realize that that is also sin? And the thing is, is that that's why people get the spirit of fear upon them because they're living in known rebellion against the Lord. Because the thing is that we're supposed to cast all of our cares and burdens upon the cross. Guys, we're supposed to give it to him, but we don't and we try to hang on to things. And then what we're doing is that we live in a state of fear. We live in a state of depression and we wonder why we can't get out of it. We've opened ourselves up to demonic entities and it is given, we've given them legal rights because we were in direct disobedience to the word of God. And so I'm telling you to tell you guys is that that within itself is all also sin. So don't just think because you're not fornicating, you're not drinking, you're not smoking, you're not watching pornography that, oh, well, I'm living a good life and I'm not sinning against the Lord, but you live in depression and fear and anxiety and everything else. And you, and you or try gossip. to, and you, and you don't, yeah, you gossip, you don't submit yourself to the Lord and his will. You try to do your own thing and what you want to do guys, that is all sin also. And so we need to be very, very aware that the Bible says that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. 
And that's the lack of the knowledge of what the word truly says. And so the thing is is that we think that I'm not living in sin, but we're living in our own will. We're doing what we want to do. And it might not be the, we might not be deviant, you know, terrible sinners. But the thing is, is that if we're not submitting to God and his will, then we're living in sin. You know, you said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yes. And it popped into my head that 90% of the people who are being tempted, they haven't resisted the devil. So he's just like hanging out with them like, hey, buddy, you ready to sin again? Yeah. And so You ready to go outside again? Yeah, you ready to so go down nobody, to the liquor store again? Yeah. And so whenever we're dealing with these things, it's because we haven't resisted him. We haven't gotten to our word because everybody deals with their flesh, you guys. Everyone, Everyone deals us. with their flesh. We have to crucify the flesh daily. Yep. And so we we get so caught up we realize that the devil's speaking to us he's making us feel all these feelings and we need to resist him so that he will flee from us doesn't mean he won't come and try to come back later but we can speak like back up off of me devil in the name of jesus and let me tell you what anytime that you're like if you're a smoker you're a drinker every single time you have those urges it's a spirit on your back speaking to you asking you to feed it Every time you feed that nicotine addiction, you are literally feeding a spirit on you. Yeah, you and are. so, and that's something that really, really opened up my eyes is to every time you have a withdrawal, every time that type of thing is happening to you, it's the spirit saying, I'm getting weak. I'm going to need you to feed me. But what you should be doing is you should be resisting that devil. And then as soon as you get it as weak as you possibly can, call it off of you in the name of Jesus and tell it to leave you so that you can be free and you're no longer a slave with something on top of you holding you down. And the thing is, if you are a slave uh, to sin, then where are we at here? It says for whenever we were Yeah, whenever you're a slave to sin, you were free from righteousness. There was no righteousness in you. And here's the thing is that I wanted to get to that point, guys, is that for, it says in 20, it says, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Guys, if we are still servants to our sin, then what he's saying is, is that we are still free from righteousness. If we want to start living a righteous, holy life before an almighty God, we have got to resist our sin. We have got to come up higher. We have got to realize that we are in a spiritual battle every single day and that the enemy is trying to kill you with sin. He's trying to kill you with it. He wants you to suffer just as he is going to suffer in the end day. In the last day, whenever whenever the, we stand before the great white throne of judgment, he wants to take you down with him. And that is through sin. That's the only way that he can do it is through speaking to your flesh, getting you to, to fall into temptation. It's all sin, guys, and it's all of the devil. So I did some a little bit of research on what righteousness really does for you according to scripture right living in righteousness so the definition is acting in according with divine or moral law free of guilt and sin righteousness okay and so i was like okay so in the bible what does it mean to be walking in righteousness and what does that do for you and so it says in the word blessings are upon the head of the just the memory of the just and upright is blessed it, the wise of heart will receive commandments. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. The mouth of the righteous man is a well of life. Mm. Love of the righteous covers all sin. The lips of him that have understanding and is wisdom is found. And it says the labor of the righteous tend to life. Um, he is in the way of life, keepeth instruction. So there's so many. <laughs> it just goes on and so on. I mean, like, all I throughout the word. Kept going. And so the desires of the righteous shall be granted. The fear of the Lord prolong your days. And so it's it's amazing it, to see what righteousness and it does for somebody in their life. And it's the opposite of sin, guys. And so, but the thing is that if we're constantly giving in to known sin, okay, guys, so what the Ooh, thing is, integrity is that, of the upright shall guide them. So what we're, yes, that's good. So what we're doing, guys, is that we are living in known rebellion against God. We cannot, if we're living in known rebellion against God, then it's hard to be pleasing to God. We cannot live in righteousness, especially if we know that every single day we just keep on known fully sinning. Now, there's one thing where we make a mistake, you know, where something happens and we are quick to forgive. Do not keep big accounts <laughs> with God. Okay. If you know you're 
you're doing something, you know something that you did and it is against God, then we need to be quick to repent. Don't let it build up. Don't let the don't let all these accounts start to build up with God because the thing is the next thing you know you got a whole book of guilt before an almighty God and we don't want to do that be quick to humble yourselves be quick to repent be quick to turn away from sin and whatever that might look like guys and the thing is is that it's all throughout the Bible we use big illustrations obviously to try to get our point across but the thing is is that like I said earlier that sin can come in little bitty small packages and it wants to disguise itself as these good little things and it's not it's not that bad oh it's not that bad God will wink at that God will wink at your gossip God will wink that you live in in continual fear um, whenever you know that you, we should not what shall we fear we should fear nothing God know God that we're living in a, in a complete state of of of, uh, of sadness and not grateful for what the Lord has done in our lives you know oh no no that's not that's not really sin where we are just uh, we're not uh, thankful for what the Lord has done because we don't pray we don't get in our word we don't do the things that we're supposed to do we don't we don't press in we don't try to build a relationship with our father we think that because we said a prayer walk the aisle sign the card got dunked in the in the dunking booth that we're good to go and that's all we're going to be doing and that's that's as good as it gets and now we're going to make our way to heaven that's not what he that's not what he wants from us that's the very first step into what he wants for us. There's so much more and he wants you to go deeper. Deep calls unto deep. Come out. Go deep. Quit getting your toes wet and get get out in the water with him. Start trusting him. Start living in his will. Get to know who your savior is. Yeah, because one of the biggest lies that the devil has is that you can still be a slave to sin and make heaven your home because you cannot. You cannot be a slave to sin and make heaven your home. You need to be a bond servant to Christ and be striving to live uprightly, striving. Right? We are covered by grace, right? But we shouldn't make grace a mockery either. We shouldn't take our Savior for granted and the blood of Jesus for granted because we can live however we want and still be covered by his graces. Like we shouldn't want to do that to Jesus. If you love him, you wouldn't do that to him. If you're truly following him, you would have a relationship with him enough to not want to put Jesus in that situation because yes. guys I seriously get like sick sometimes of what the world is doing to Jesus like it makes me sad that some of these Christians running around truly believe that they're servants to Christ and yet they're attending things like the Grammys they're doing watching it putting that kind of things in their minds and thinking that it's acceptable and they're in the world they're of the world but yet they want to call themselves Christians and what she was just saying sad. we can look at the very first uh, verse of chapter 6 Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Number two, God forbid. He's like, God forbid that we should continue in sin. Whenever we get saved, whenever we, whenever we give our lives to Christ, grace is not going to abound in people who are still living in known rebellion against God in sin. They are, grace is not going to abound in their lives. Yes, we is, are free to choose between the two masters. And it says, but it says, choose you this day, day whom you shall serve. And that's because you cannot more serve two masters. And Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters at the same time. And so he's saying, you're either going to serve sin, you're going to serve the devil, or you're going to serve as righteousness, you're going to serve me. And so those are the only two options. There is none of this, all this gray area. It's not there when it comes to this matter. It's just not there. There is no gray matter. It's, it's black it's or it's fact. white. It's a matter of fact. That's exactly right. And the thing is that all through here, see the guys, the thing is that he says, for whenever we were servants of sin, you were sin, free from righteousness. It, all through here, all in chapter six, it says in, in verse six, it says, we should not serve sin. In seven, for he that is dead is freed from sin. For he that is dead, what do you mean? that he, After he dies? No, whenever he dies to his flesh, whenever he makes a commitment to Christ and raised he is baptized. To walk in raised to life. walk in newness of life. Just like Pastor Greg says, we hear it every single Sunday. And the thing is, is that that's and, what he's talking about. Life. <laughs> in 12, it says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Reign, that means take control. That means rule. Rule and reign over your body do not let sin therefore reign your mortal body we move on to uh 13 and in the end it says 
You use your members as an instrument of righteousness unto God. 14, for sin shall have not have dominion over you. The thing is, guys, if we do not use our members as an instrument of righteousness unto God, he's saying that then sin will have dominion over us. It will rule over us. And that's why he, he, just, and he just keeps going. He just keeps going. I mean, in 16, it says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. He's saying, you, you need to know if you are serving, then you are, a, if you are serving your sin, you are serving your flesh, and that is who you are a servant to. You cannot be a servant unto your flesh and unto sin and a servant of God at the same time. And that's why when the Lord, whenever I read through this, I was like, man, this is so good because guys, we can so easily fall into that trap of that we can be a servant of God, but yet still please ourselves with the things and the lusts of this world. And I'm here to tell you, Paul is telling you right here, you cannot you cannot because then there's no righteousness. We're going to have to keep moving because I can stay on verse 20 for a long, long time. So verse 20 I want to is... hit this real fast though. It says you were free from righteousness, right? It says in the word that righteousness delivereth out of death. You are free of that. So you had no righteousness. So how can you be delivered out of death? Righteousness or the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. How can you get deliverance if you're not living upright before the Lord? If you're not striving to live upright before the Lord? Uh, it says the righteous is delivered out of trouble. If you're free from righteousness, how can you be delivered out of trouble? So we want to be striving to live in righteousness with the Lord. And so that's why we don't want to be free from righteousness, you guys. No. That's one thing no. I wanted to get across right there is because righteousness will deliver you out of death. It means you'll never taste the second death. death. Yeah, you'll never taste death if you're living in righteousness. See, the thing is, guys, that whenever we're a true Christian of the Lord, see, what the what people, a lot of people don't understand is you can't kill a Christian. You cannot kill Everybody's a like, Christian. What, oh, what do you mean? Say? Oh, it says that it's appointed, it's appointed once for every man to die. It absolutely is, but only one death. But you can't kill us because the thing is, is that whenever we leave here, we go to even a better place. It, Paul says to live as Christ, to die is it's gain. gain. So the thing is, is that it is a gain. We get to gain things because it is so much better where we're going than where we're at right now. And the thing is, we'll never have to suffer the second death. That is the true death. This mortal body, whenever this mortal body dies, that is not death because we go on. And so what people don't understand is that the Christians want to fear death. They want to fear of leaving this world. Why? Why? Oh, well, I still have loved ones here that I need to tend to, that, I, that they need me. They need this. The thing is, is that if, if we leave this world, it will be so much better than this world. And so we need to not fear death. See, that's a lie from Satan to fear death. We should fear death. We should, and, and, and so many Christians, so many people in the church, they, they have this, they have this crazy fear of death and we should not fear death not because we can't Jesus. die. We not cannot die. Not if you're serving Jesus. And so let's keep on moving guys. Cause we can talk about verse 20 forever. I should have just, we, we, we should have just said verse gab. 20 and just made a whole lesson on verse 20, but we're going to move on in 21. It says, what fruit had ye then in those things? Wherefore ye are now ashamed. Okay, I want to stop right there just for one second. I want to talk for two seconds on this. Obviously, we realized there was no fruit. There was no good fruit in the things that were thereof. Whenever we lived in the world, whenever we were servants to sin, there was no fruit. Oh, and it says oh we, we had fruit. Are, oh, but it was we bad. had fruit of the flesh. So we had sexual immor immorality, impurity, idolatry, sorcery, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries. Mm -hmm distension, enviness, drunkenness. Yeah, and it so. says, it says, wherefore ye are now ashamed. And the thing is, is that we better be ashamed of where we were, of our past, of how we were in complete and utter denial of Jesus and how we were literally not accepting the work on the cross that Jesus had done for us because I hear all the time. Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to talk about this for two seconds. This one and we're got me. Move, this is a good and one. we're just going to move along real quick. But 
It gets me so much when I hear Christians talking about their past and they're talking about it like it was the good old days. In the oh, good old back days. Back in the day, I could drink anybody under the table. Back in the day, I could smoke a half a pound of weed in one day. Back in the day, I was a ladies' man and I got with all the women. Back in the day, this. Back in the day, that. What are you talking about? We should be ashamed of the way that we acted back then. We should be ashamed that we were slaves to our sin. We should be ashamed that we... That that we were not accepting the work on the cross and we put Christ to shame. Because honestly, if you're not ashamed of it a little bit, did you really repent for it? Or you just or you just scared that you're going to go to hell and so you had to do away with those things. So the thing is that we don't have the right mindset because I hear so many people, so many people talking about the good old days as if that was like that was like whenever they were living it up in their lives and those were the good times. Now, no. you know, now I have we to be We live reserved. in the glory of the Lord. These are the best days of our lives cuz he gives us a hope and a future. Yeah. If right? you think Christianity is boring, then you're doing it wrong. wrong. I have so much more fun now than I ever did in a bar, than I ever did at somebody's house that I ever did in a hotel room. I can tell you that I have so much more fun now than I've ever had in my entire life. So for people to talk about their past and their sin and in their shame, and they are unashamed of it is absolutely, it blows my mind. Yeah. It blows my mind. I don't want to go mind. to the bar. I want to go to the throne room of heaven and watch people be healed and set free in Jesus name. That's way more exhilarating than anything absolutely. that the world can offer. When you watch somebody get supernaturally healed by the power of the Lord Jesus, that's higher than any high you can ever get. Let me tell you what. So absolutely. feeling the presence of the Lord is better than anything this world can offer you. Yes, absolutely. Because the thing is, is that we should be ashamed of it. Why? For the end of those things is death. That is why we should be ashamed of it because we were living in death. We were living, it was everything that we were doing, we were promoting death. And the thing is, guys, we need to stop promoting death. We need to not be talking about our past as if it was something that we did and that it was fun. Yeah, that and you honestly, were living it up back then. Guys, no, it was, we should take it and use it as a springboard to show people that the way that I was living was death. There is no life in this. We were, I was doomed and, and going to hell, but thank God that he grabbed a hold of my hand and he pulled me up out of that miry clay and he set my feet upon the rock upon him and that I could stand firm because I was sinking. I was drowning. I was miserable. I was depressed. I was angry. I, everything around me was just, it was being completely controlled by demonic forces. Those are not the good yeah, old days. And honestly, guys, should you be boasting about the times that if you would have died, you would have went straight to hell? No. no. Would you have been boasting if you would have died in those moments and been uh, sitting before an almighty God at the throne room? No. So we should not, darkness. yeah, we yep. should not be boasting about those things because you are saved by the grace of the Lord that he pulled you up out of that and that you didn't die in your sin Absolutely. and that you didn't die unrepentive. And then for you to say, well, back in the glory days, no, we're in the glory days now. This is the glory we're days. We're seeing revival. We're seeing people being set free. We're seeing lives being changed by the gospel. We're seeing people be come out out of that grave and come alive in the name of Jesus. We are literally seeing this. Your sin is not your glory days. Your no. sin, you're lucky that you didn't bust hell wide open. And you shouldn't be boasting about it because you just might bust hell wide open. Yeah, we should keep going be... back. Don't put your hand to the plow and look back. Yeah, we mm -hmm. should be ashamed of those things because for the end of those things is death. But number 22, we're going to keep on rolling. This Verse 22. Glory days. But now being made free from sin, there it is again, being made free from sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. We're free from it, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end is everlasting life. So there it is right there. We are no longer, we have been made free from sin. Jesus paid the price for us so that we could be made free from sin. Why on earth would we be like a dog going back to its vomit when we've already been delivered, set free from that? The battle's already been won. It was won at the cross with the blood of Jesus. Why would we take that? Why would we put Jesus back on the cross? Because like he said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Grace will not abound in your sin, in your yeah. known rebellion. 
Granted, we all make mistakes. We're humans. But oh, the thing but there's is, a difference between living in sin and making mistakes. Absolutely. And that's what I want to say, guys, is that there's a big difference there because we all fall. We all stumble. Okay. We're fleshly humans. We're wicked and vile and there's nothing good in us. Anything good in us is of God. And so if we do anything of us, it is wicked and evil. So the thing is, guys, that yes, we do fall. We do make mistakes, but we're quick to re repent. That's why I said we don't need to have large accounts with the Lord. We need to be quick to repent, re quick, be quick to humble ourselves, stay on your knees, stay in the word. Because I'll tell you this, guys, you're just like, oh, I'm struggling so much. I don't know what to do. Get in your word. Get in the word. Guys, this word, you know, they did a study and they had people start reading the Bible and these guys, there was like, I can't remember how many, don't quote me on this because I'm, but I do know numbers as far as the percentage wise. Okay. But there were so many guys, let's just say that there was, you know, 20 guys and they were all had uh, pornography issues. Okay. And so what they did was they said, so every day we want you to read the word and they gave them verses to read. They gave them chapters to read. And that after two weeks, they came back and they asked them as far as, are you still, uh, how much, uh, how much pornography are you watching? How much are you indulging in sin? How much are you doing this? They said that every single guy watched pornography. Okay. In the beginning, all of them said, admitted, yeah, I watched pornography. Did you know 80% of them quit watching pornography just because they read the Bible, just because they were reading the Bible, they quit watching pornography, 80% of them. So that means that the majority of them, now the other ones and the other, there was, there was like, I think there was like one guy who said he's continuing watching the other one. And the other one said that he is still watching it, but it's a lot less than what he was. But 80% said that whenever I started reading the word, I just quit watching it wow. because it convicted me. Yeah. The word of God. It will convict the intentions you. of the it'll heart. It'll cut you. It'll yeah, cut you down. Divide you. Yes. It'll cut you to the core to the bone and to the marrow, guys, it, it goes, a slice is going in, a slice is going out. Guys, it's here to convict you. If you want conviction in your life and you're struggling with even having conviction in your life, get in the word. And it will start convicting you. It will draw you closer to the Lord. It will bring up your convictions. I pray all the time, Lord, keep my convictions high because the thing is, is that whenever my convictions start to start to lapse and start to fall then i realize what's happening is that i'm drifting yourself. away further from the lord if my convictions stay high and even if some people are like oh that's not bad well if i'm being convicted by it then in my it's world bad. yeah it is bad and so i that's we work out our, we work yeah. out our own salvation through fear and trembling and so that's what paul says so the thing is is that we need to have a high conviction in our lives. And if we don't, then we need to get in the word. We need to be servants to God. Yeah, and for whenever, the, we, have the, we need to have the fruit of holiness. Sorry, go ahead. Whenever we become servants to the Lord, we begin to operate in love and joy, peace, patience, goodness, mm -hmm. faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We start doing all of those things. But if we are operating in the flesh, we do not operate in love. We don't operate in joy. The devil steals our joy when we're operating in the flesh because he knows if he can steal our joy, then he steals our strength in the Lord because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So he's going to come after that. And if yep. you're working in your flesh, well, he's going to steal that right from you. He's going to steal your joy because you can't operate in joy and still live in sin. You just can't do it. It's impossible. He's obviously going to steal our peace. So the devil's literally stealing the good fruit from us and making us operate in the flesh. Yeah. And we are allowing it. We're just handing him. We all are of literally our good allowing fruit. him to sit at our table and eat. That is our table. That's why it says the fruit of the spirit. That's our table. That's what we eat off of. We eat, we we thrive off of having love in our lives and having joy in our lives and having peace and patience and kindness and and contentness and all these things. Like we thrive off of that, and we allow the enemy to come and sit at our table and start eating all of our fruit up. He'll eat it up if we let him. Oh, yeah. And so He's going to eat it for himself. <laughs> and then you ain't going to have nothing left, but you're going to be sitting there angry and hungry. Yeah, and you're so, going to be all hangry. <laughs> you're going to be hangry, like, and then you're going to be sinning. And so make sure that we are being servants to the Lord. Because yeah. once you submit to your life to the Lord, you don't have time for anything else. You really, really don't. And you can no. tell when you're a servant to the Lord, whenever things are getting fleshly, you can be like, okay, back up. I'm operating my flesh a little bit because this doesn't feel like love. This doesn't feel like peace. This doesn't feel like joy. I'm not being long suffering. I'm not being forgiving. I'm operating in the flesh. And you have the ability when you're serving the Lord, he gives you that insight because when you're walking in uprightness, he gives you 
all the commandments. He gives you the discernment. He gives you the wisdom to know whenever you're stepping out of bounds. Yeah, and well, the thing is, guys, is that whenever we're walking like that and we're doing it on a continual basis, we're walking in anger, we're walking in contention, we're walking in gossip, we're walking in all these things, that is a direct reflection of your relationship with the Lord. Mm. It's a direct relationship of, of, of your relationship with God. And so whenever you're like, I don't know why I do all these things, uh, well, it's because you don't have a true relationship with the Lord. You're not in the presence of the you Lord. You are not in your word the way you should be. You're not in your prayer clause the way you should be. You're not seeking the Lord's face like you should be. And the thing is, is that it all comes back, guys. Whenever we look at things, it all comes back to the word. Where is your study life at? Where are you in the word? Well, I don't understand the word. Well, ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding and discernment of what he's trying to say because every single word in here was written by the Holy Spirit. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit himself, every word in this book. And so if, why not, if I, if I had direct access to the author of a book and I'm reading it and I had his phone number sitting next to me and I didn't understand what he was saying, the thing is that if I knew I could pick up that phone and be like, Hey buddy, I'm reading your book. Um, so what did you mean by whenever you, whenever you said, uh, this in chapter six and he'd say, Oh, okay. Yeah. This is what I meant. Oh, awesome. Thank you. You just made that so much clearer for me. Thank you so much. Hang up the phone. Have a great day. Bye. Hang it up. Guys, we can do that with the Holy spirit. He wrote it. We can ask him Holy spirit. Give me discernment on what you want me to see here. What are you saying here? Give me understanding. Give me wisdom to oh, decipher this. Oh, but you're not going to be able to do that if you're too busy listening to the voice of the enemy, right? If you're living in sin and you are consuming yourself with sin and you're allowing the voice of the enemy to be louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit, you can't sit here and ask him, hey, tell me this, tell me this, tell me this. You have to know the voice of your father. And the only way to do that is if you're in your word, if you're consuming yourself with the good things and you're being a good servant and your ear is turned towards the father's voice. Yeah. And so, yes, we have all the access to the Holy Spirit. We really do. But we also have to temper ourselves to know his voice, know that still calm voice, because it's so easy to listen to the voice of the enemy, to listen to the voice of the world. And so we need to make sure that we are truly being servants to the Lord and living in that uprightness and holiness mm -hmm. so that we can be ushered into the everlasting life. We can hear the voice of the Father. We can be quickened in our spirits. Yes. Yeah. And that's the end because it's that because the end is everlasting life where we live in holiness. And now we can move on to verse 23. It says, for the wages, which we all know this one. We've all heard this one. It's It's been preached a million times. We've heard it since Sunday school. For the wages of sin is death. If we're going to go around living in sin, then it is death. Death follows after the things of this world. Death follows after the lust of your flesh. It always ends in death. You it always will. get paid for something. So are you going to get paid with death or are you going to get paid with everlasting life? So guys, remember, whenever you're living in known rebellion against God, whenever you're doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, think about this. Think about what Paul said, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is death. We should not take this lightly. Okay, real quick, guys, we put so much emphasis on the things of this world, on this oh, life. I got something on to this say. Life. Okay, so okay, the wages of sin is death. So you're getting paid for what you did, right? You're getting paid yeah. and you're getting paid back for everything you did. And the wages for sin is death. So you operate in sin, you're going to get death as a wage. But That's the your paycheck. gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus is because it's free. It's free and it's given to you freely and you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to expect, the Lord gives it to you for free. All you have to do is seek Jesus. Oh, that's so good. Accept him. Accept him. Yes, it's a gift and we all know that, that it was a free gift and everybody, but now I do want to tell you that yes, salvation is a free gift, but, but James says faith without works is dead. dead. And so we want to do works. We want to go out and we want to minister the gospel. We want to be edifying in other people's lives. We want to work in the church. We want to volunteer. We want to do our part. We want to operate in our gifts that was given to us. Guys, we don't earn it. We don't earn salvation. But the thing is, is that if 
that it, the Lord has done so much for us, why would we not want to do for him? And it's not about whether or not, it's not about heart. whether or not I'm, oh, well, I'm going to do this because I'm going to get a bigger crown in heaven, or I'm going to oh, get man. that bigger You're mansion, or I'm going to be, to I'm going to be up on the, up on the penthouse floor because I'm doing all this. That's not what it's about at all. You're doing it because you love the Lord. That's it. Why well, expect nothing in return because he's already given me more than I will ever, ever deserve. If God did not, not one more thing for me, that he would still be a holy and just God. And I could still not repay him for what he's done for me. If he never chose to not do one more thing for me right now, this day, guys. So the thing is, is that that was really good though. For the wage of a sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It is a gift, but we have to accept it. We have to turn away. We have to make a conscious decision to become, to break off the chains that the sin has put upon us, to break those off, bind up that strong man that has a hold on you and be free of him and become a servant of Christ yeah. and start living for him. Submit to God. Yeah, because... Sin will cost you everything. It's very everything. costly. It's, um, you literally work for it. You work for sin. Sin's hard work. You literally have to work for it. Yeah. You go out, you go seek it. The flesh earn, yearns it. It So you're literally out there working for it. It costs it, you, and you a lot paid. even on this earth. But the beautiful thing about this is you know if you're operating within the spirit because if you're operating within the flesh, it's going to cost you something. But if you're operating within the spirit, it is a gift. And it's given to you freely. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wants to give it to you. All you have to do is ask him. Because when you ask him and you're following him, your wants are his wants because yep. you've been in your word. And so, of course, he's going to grant the desires of your heart because your desires are his desires because Amen. he's planted those desires in you. Yes. And so he's going to gift you with it freely. But if it's an operation of the flesh, it's going to cost you something. If you want to go cost out and drink, everything. it's going to cost you your, could cost you your family. It could cost you your life. It could cost you. It could cost you somebody. It could cost somebody, somebody else's, else's life. Somebody else's life, yeah. The thing is, guys, that what I was going to say earlier and before she made a really, really good point was that we put so much emphasis on this life, okay, and what we want to do with this life. We can look at a long rope, okay, and I have a rope this long, okay, well, I'm just using this because I only have this much screen, but I have a rope that, that is this long and only that much of it is my life here on this earth. That's it. And we put so much emphasis and we and we want we want to make sure that this part is so important to us and that we get to do what we want to do and how we want to do it and when we want to do it whenever we have all the rest of this rope which is our eternal life. But we were willing to sacrifice all of this for this. For this little bitty part. This we are but a vapor. We're but a vapor here on this earth and we're willing to risk it all and put it all away and ruin eternity because moment. of something that's only this long. Why would we do that? This is, we are not, this is not our home. We are not here to stay. We're not, this is just, we're just passing through. We are sojourners here on we're this earth. Our we are here. moving through. Yeah. And so why would we put so much emphasis on this little bitty bit to where it could ruin all of this? The rest of eternity, there is no time after this. See, right now we are on a time limit and we need to not worry about this time limit. What we need to be worried about is the rest of our lives. Yeah, which and is worried about that which gift I said that earlier, leads to everlasting life. Which I said earlier is that you can't kill a Christian. But the thing is, is that we don't want to spend the rest of our lives in a fiery grave we don't want to do that. We want to spend it with the Lord Jesus. And so quit putting so much emphasis on this and quit trying to live it up here on this earth. Submit to God. Do what he wants you to do while He while you're on this earth. Life is not as important as what everybody makes it out to be. See, it's a lie from the enemy. The enemy wants you to say, oh, this is your life. You only live once. You do what you want to do, how you want to do it. You need to be successful and everything else. And you need to do everything that you ever oh, have no. wanted to do because after this life, it's all over. After this life, it's all over. Oh, no, no. It's just the beginning. Oh, no. You need to be living your life so that when you get to heaven, you see all the people that you helped get there by the, for mm. the glory of God, right? And so that's what we need to be searching for. Not searching for the desires of the flesh, but searching for the desires of the spirit so that yeah. when we get to heaven, we are met with a multitude of people that we 
actually were serving. And so, I mean, imagine the amount of people that Pastor Greg has been able to help the Lord reach with the gospel. Yeah. All of those people, when he gets to heaven, are going to be there and they're going to be like, the Lord's going to be like, look at all these people that you put in the footwork for and you helped me get to. You were a mouthpiece for me. Yep. Like, that's what I want when yeah. I get to heaven. And I want to meet and some of gonna the be people. Testimony after testimony after testimony of Pastor Greg, whenever you got up there and you said this, it changed my life. When yeah, you went Lord out there with that bullhorn on the corner, whenever you stepped out on the back of that Bubba truck and started preaching out of your out of that mm. gravel parking lot, you changed my life and you brought me to the Lord. And it Guys, all comes back it's to gonna Jesus. Just, yeah, and it, yeah, and all he's those gonna get crowns, the glory. All those crowns, we're gonna be tossed at his feet. Yep. And we're gonna say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is filled with his glory. And so that's what we want. It all yeah. comes back to him. It's going to be amazing, guys. But we need to quit focusing on this and focus on this. That's why this, this passage important. ends with Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's because it all ends with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Like how I landed the plane there? We're landing it, guys, because we've been on here for almost an hour. <laughs> and so guys, I feel like that was a smooth landing. I really Ooh. hope that this guy, that this spoke to you guys. And if any of you guys, and I know a lot of us, you know, I know a lot of us, we... We are striving for righteousness. We strive to be holy. You know, God says, uh, be ye holy as I am holy. And so we need to strive for that. But the thing is, guys, is that some of us, we do stumble and we fall, but we're quick to repent. And I know a lot of you guys are really sensitive to the spirit. You guys are discerning of the Lord. You guys are, are on your knees a lot. And But... I hope that this has spoke to some of you guys, maybe opened up your eyes to some things that what might not look like sin is still sin. And we need to, we need to check ourselves look, and make sure that Look, said I our, hit the runway. That's good. Yes. Yes, she did. And so guys, I really hope that this, that this message spoke to you because remember I was reading it, it really spoke to me and opened my eyes to a lot of things that, that I need to be more aware of some things because we all stumble and we all fall. Mm -hmm. And so I need to be, and sometimes we miss it. We miss the mark sometimes, guys. And so I want to strive to hit the mark every single day. And if I don't, then I'm quick to repent about it and the Lord can wipe it. The Lord can take it off my plate. And so I'm not, I'm not piling up my plate in, on of just sin and lust and everything else because every single day that I do that and I don't repent and I don't move forward and I'm not progressively moving towards righteousness, then I'm putting a wedge between me and the Lord. Yeah, and the thing is, you guys, we already have the accuser going before the throne room and writing transgressions against us. And so when we ask for forgiveness, the blood of Jesus wipes those away as if they never happened. So we need to be quick to repent. Yeah, because as Lord. the accuser is up there accusing us and we're asking and like, we're forgiving, what? he's just sitting there taking that pen and just blotting it out, blotting it out. He's like, but, but, but what about this? And you're like, Lord, I know that today I stumbled. I got angry. I failed. I gossiped whenever I shouldn't have. Lord, please, I, I ask, for, I, I repent to you, Father. Then he's like, and he's like, oh. And he blots out. And yeah, so don't let the accuser rack up big long lists against you. Okay, so well that's why I said don't quick. don't make a, don't make long accounts. Don't make long accounts with them because the thing is that everything that is said is access what down. is given to you freely. Access mm -hmm. the gift that is given to you freely. Amen. Access your repentance. Access your salvation. Access the gifts. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to close. I'm going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you. I praise you for this beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for washing us in it. Thank you for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to give us these words, to show us that we don't have to be a slave to sin, that we can be a servant to you and that we can live free we can live free and we can live holy lives before you, Father, and that, that our lives can be accepting to you. Father, let each, each and every single person that's here today, let them turn away from their sin. Let them not be a slave unto sin. For we are servants to you, Father, and we know that we can only serve one master. So let us serve you. Let everything that we do be in your honor and glory to you, Father. Father, I pray that as each and every single person, as as they uh, as they hop off of here today and they go throughout the rest of their day, Father, bless them. I just pray a blessing over each and every single one of them. I pray that your peace would just fall down upon them, that they would be filled up with your joy, filled up with your understanding. Holy Spirit, lead and guide their footsteps in the way that they should go. Give them discernment. Give them wisdom and everything that they do. Father, we praise you, we glorify you, we worship you, and we love you. And I pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Oh, thank you. Oh. While everyone's still on there, I want to address the pre-order <laughs> one more time. So if you 
If you uh, ordered from the pre-order for the apparel, you guys should get it by the first week in March. So they you are will. awesome. They're in the process of getting made, and I've seen the pictures, and they're really super cool. You guys are not going to be they're disappointed. Awesome. The quality is legit. It is so legit. So we're super, super excited. Please be patient with our producer. She's working her little hiney off, and <laughs> she's really trying. And so um, we just thank you guys. We thank you guys for just sticking it out with us, listening to what the Lord has put on our hearts we love you so much and um if you're not getting notifications go on to the gvc online support ministry and like it and follow it and every time we go live now it's actually gonna ding and it's gonna um bring you to where you can actually get our stuff and so we're putting everything on there and sharing it to the online community and all the good things yep so go over there and like that page or follow it actually if you follow it then you'll get the notifications if you just like it you won't but if you follow it you'll get the notifications and that way because we're going we go live all the time guys and y'all don't want to miss some of this stuff yes some stuff's not that important but the, i'd say a lot of it is, we have a lot of fun so yes. you guys and last miss night out on we it. went live for prayer tonight i think we're gonna take the night and just spend the night with our kids because we've been running around like crazy people and i just want to be a mom tonight Justin and I, we had our anniversary yesterday for our marriage, and we're just going to love on each other because we did work yesterday. We're just going to hang out. We're well, I think we're just going to spend the day with the kiddos mm -hmm. and just, I don't we're gonna know. We're going to make some salmon. Oh, we are. So, okay. Yeah. That sounds we're good going to, to the me. store right yeah, now. Yeah, let's go to the store. I'm hungry. I haven't I'm eaten hungry. today. So, all right, guys. Um, uh, One gentleman asked that when are we going to be on again? Uh, we'll be going live on uh, Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do is we'll do a Sunday walk in. Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Saturday. Good. Good. Goodness. All right. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow morning at 1020, we're going to go live. We're going to talk to you guys for a minute and we're going to do the walk around in the tent. That way you guys kind of get an in-house experience and we're going to walk through. People love to say hi and hey online community and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, maybe we'll even catch Pastor Greg. He'll give you and he likes to talk and stuff or Miss Ty or even uh, Kiara or Pastor Jesse, you know, so we'll usually try to get them to talk to you guys for a minute. So we do that every single Sunday morning yes. and we do it every single Wednesday night. And so it's right before uh, the actual service. Normally we do it about 10 minutes. You know, we don't take up a whole lot of time, but normally for about 10 minutes, we'll go live and we'll just have some fun and walk around the tent and just let you guys see some faces, let people say hey to you. And uh, we just enjoy doing it. I know you guys do too. And uh, they absolutely enjoy it. They always like to see us walking around. They're like, oh, I'm going to wave at you guys. So, <laughs> but yeah, so we'll be going live. Um, we go live every single Wednesday, every single Sunday morning, Thank every you guys. single Wednesday night. And uh, we do this every single Saturday. Um, we did miss out on one Saturday. That's because the tent was being put up and we were like mm -hmm. super busy on the campus, but we don't like to miss this at all. Like this is like, this is like one of the highlights of my like week. I love it. Also, we, we do the uh, marriage ministry, the Beyond the Veil. It's Global Vision Beyond the Veil Marriage Ministry. We have a Facebook page. I know we have tons of Facebook pages. Here's another one you guys can add to your list. It's Beyond the Veil. Uh, it's Global Vision Beyond the Veil Marriage Ministry. And every other week, every other Thursday, we go live and we do Bible studies on there too. Yes. And so if you guys want to hang out and do that too, you guys are more than welcome to. Um, and if you guys aren't married, you're like, well, I'm not married. I'm engaged. That's get on there anyway. That's okay. Hop on. Or even if you're even if you're a single individual and you just want to get some more word in you throughout the week and you just want to get onto another Bible study. Now, I will say that we do try to revolve it around marriage, but there's some good stuff in there that it can be, um, all of it can be applied Travis, to your lives. Travis, Pastor Greg is not going to give you any numbers to call. So if anybody says Pastor Greg has a message for you, oh that goodness, is a scammer. No. Don't give any, the only way Pastor Greg is we take tithes and offerings on Sunday and yep. occasionally Wednesday if he has somebody that he needs to bless. So um, he will not ask for any type of GoFundMe, anything like that. So no, no GoFundMe, no just WhatsApp. Block them oh, dearly beloved. The I've I, never was, I have this Pastor personal. Greg. I have this personal message for you that I want to send. That's a that's a load of garbage. Yeah, Pastor that Greg's is, personal assistant is not going to get a hold of you unless you have called the church first. Yeah, and so. Pastor Greg will never call you beloved, <laughs> 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 or never have anybody else call you beloved. So no. <laughs> whenever you see that, that is like scam one on one right there. Dearly beloved, Pastor Greg has a as a word for you. Text this number on the WhatsApp. That's not true. Yes, so. and also we wanted to thank you guys for the prayers yesterday. Our oh, meeting was super you guys great. So much. We're gonna find out our good news i'm believing in the lord on the third so just be yep. in prayer for us we're super 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 excited and it's just it's for our kids so it's just it is. yeah it's for our kids so just be in prayer for them be in prayer for us because this mama's heart really is expecting the lord to do some really really great things yep. Yep. so we love y'all and we thank you guys for watching us and if you guys need any type of prayer or anything you can go to um 
justincase at globalvisionbc.com or 615-878-2031. All right, guys. Love y'all. Talk Bye. to you later.